do you want to discover the life-changing impact of prayer in today's chaotic world? Prayer has uh, the inherent power to move mountains, uproot sickness and disease, and open doors that were shut before you. I have experienced in my life firsthand how the power of prayer can transform lives every single day. I would like you to like our video, to subscribe to our channel, to comment and to share with all your friends and acquaintances and they also will be blessed today. Now, we will look at the point number one and in our point number one that we want to explore today is that prayer empowers you to actually exhibit the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the power of the Holy Spirit is available to every born again believer. Once you are born again, the Holy Spirit dwells inside you and his power is available to you as well. When we look at the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ on earth, he spent time communing with the Father daily. He would find a secluded and a solitary place where he could be alone to talk to his heavenly Father. And we also, we need to find a time on a daily basis to commune with God, to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with God. Jesus would pray early in the morning and also at night. He will sometimes spend the whole night in prayer. So there are times where we are lost in prayer. Even during the night, we spend the whole night praying like Jesus did. When Jesus returned from those moments of fellowship in prayer with his heavenly Father, he was imbued with the power to preach the gospel and the virtue to heal the sick and drive out the demons. So your time of communion with the the Godhead will imbue you with the power to share the word of God and also with virtue to heal the sick and drive out the demons. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35 to verse 32, the Bible says, Now in the morning, having risen long time before even daylight, Jesus went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he did what he prayed. So you need to find a quiet place and a quiet time early in the morning to pray to your Heavenly Father. And then Simon and those who were with Jesus searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you. When you spend time with God, everybody would want to be also with you. Everybody was looking for Jesus because he had the solution that he received from his heavenly father. The Bible says that, but Jesus said to his disciples, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, because for this purpose, I have come forth. So you have also come forth to herald God's message to a dying world around you. For you to be empowered to do so, you need to spend time with the one who sent you to share the word. And Jesus was preaching in their synagogues throughout all of Galilee and casting out the demons. So his time of prayer equipped him with the power to be able to cast out the demons. Also to cleanse lepers. The Bible says, now a leper came to Jesus, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with the compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I will. 
I am willing to be cleansed. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left that man and he was cleansed. So you see, the time of prayer that Jesus had with the Father equipped him with the power to be able to drive out the demons and to heal the sick. My brothers and my sisters, the reason why we do not have power to drive out the demons and to heal the sick is simply because we do not want to spend time with our Heavenly Father. We are unwilling to spend time speaking with our God in heaven. Time of prayer, quality time with the Lord. There is no short cut. The reason also we sometimes experience the glass ceiling in our life or our petitions seem not to be reaching heaven. It is because Satan is combating the angels who are supposed to ascend with our requests and descend with our answers. And we see it in the book of Genesis 28, verse 10 to verse 17, that Jacob had a dream and he saw a ladder and angels were ascending to the throne of God and descending. And that's how it happens in the spirit realm when you are praying. Angels are ascending and are descending. So Satan wants to prevent those angels to come down with your answer. So when you pray, you clear the way for the messenger angels to effortlessly ascend and descend on that spiritual ladder connecting you to your heavenly Father. In other words, God opens the heaven. His voice now can be heard directly without any hindrance and his Holy Spirit can be poured on your flesh to empower you to achieve great things, things that I has not seen, ear has not heard, it has not even entered into the heart of men and women. God will do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or even think. But uh, your heaven need to be cleared, opened in Jesus' name. And it is done through prayer. In Luke chapter 3, verse 21 to verse uh, 22, we see when John was baptizing Jesus. The Bible says, when all people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, so Jesus was praying, while he prayed, something happened. The heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which says, you are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. So when you spend time in prayer, when you spend time fellowshipping with God, the voice of God will become clearer than ever before. God is going to pour out of his spirit upon you to empower you to have a victorious day and a victorious uh, life. Now, before exploring our second point, uh, we would like to hear from you. Send us your prayer request and your testimonies of healing and deliverance that has occurred during uh, our prayer storm. Our WhatsApp number and our email address are both being displayed on the screen. You remember that we, the believers, the saint, we overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So when you share your testimony, someone else also is encouraged that Jesus Christ, being the same yesterday as is today, will also perform the same kind of miracle in their life. Now, point number two, 
prayer causes uh, the light of God to radiate uh, through you to dispel darkness. I used to battle in the past with uh, depression for a long time. I remember from 20, uh, se- 2007 to 2013, I used to battle with uh, depression and I attempted suicide five uh, times. It seemed like in those days that uh, darkness, even a cloud of darkness was uh, hanging over my head. And I attempted, uh, again, like I said, to kill myself five uh, times because of those uh, dark uh, thoughts that were tormenting me. When I realized that I did not have a consistent prayer life, I decided to amend my ways. Therefore, every day I started to wake up early in the morning like my Savior Jesus Christ and spend a time with my Father in heaven. I would read my Bible to feed my soul, for mankind shall not live by bread alone or by earthly food alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God that was recorded for us in the Bible. That's what Jesus told us in Luke chapter 4, verse 4. And also I would spend time to praise and worship God with my own lips of clay, so that the evil spirits that were hanging over my head would just be driven away by my praise and worship. Now, the reason why I praised and worshipped the Lord is because I understood through the scriptures, that when the evil spirit was tormenting King Saul, David praised and worshipped God with his stringed instrument. And then the result of that, the worship to God drove away evil spirit. A tangible presence of the Holy Spirit was ushered in the room where King Saul was, resulting in uh, the evil spirits to be driven away from uh, Saul. It is in First Samuel chapter 16, verse 23. And you also can stop those oppressing spirits by worshipping God. You need to spend time worshipping God with your own uh, mouth. Music is uh, spiritual. It can either usher the presence of the Holy Spirit and drive out the evil spirit in your house and upon you, or the wrong kind of music can bring evil spirit that will uh, torment uh, you and torment your family as well. So you need to be very careful the kind of music that you listen to. Music is uh, spiritual. Now, after I had fed my soul and worshipped God, I would then pray God based on what he had spoken to me when I was reading the Bible. And I will subsequently present my request to him with thanksgiving. Because we can always approach the throne of God and present all of our requests with thanksgiving. In those days, I endeavored to spend at least an hour communing with the Lord as Jesus Christ recommended his disciples in Matthew chapter 26, verse 40. It is time for us to take responsibility of our Christian life. And there are many demonic oppressions that will leave our life if we just learn to spend time with God. I also added at least one day of fasting every week because I understood by reading the scriptures and following the life of Jesus that fasting is part of our arsenal when it comes to spiritual warfare. Some demonic activities, some evil spirit, and some sicknesses will only 
stop operating in your life when faith is combined with the prayer and the fasting. Jesus himself taught us in Matthew chapter 17, verse 19 to verse 21. The Bible tells us that the disciples, being frustrated because they could not drive out the spirit of epilepsy on that boy, came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? That's a good question. Why could we not drive out evil spirits? So Jesus has said to them, and he's saying to us tonight as well, it is because of your unbelief, lack of faith. And faith only comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you do not feed your soul with the word of God, it is impossible for you to have a faith. And he said to us, for assuredly I say to you, if you have a faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you so you see faith is a powerful weapon in our arsenal but faith alone will not help you the bible says jesus continues his discourse and said however this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So you need to combine to the feeding of God's word, prayer and fasting as well. A Christian must have a daily prayer life and also a fasted life. Now, I thank God that I have been able to be permanently free from depression and my suicide attempts. The Lord set me free completely when I started to implement what I'm teaching you today in my own personal life. We are all familiar with the saying that an apple a day keeps the doctor and the pharmacist at bay. In like manner, an hour of uh, communion with God uh, a day keeps darkness uh, and its evil works uh, at bay. If you commit to commune with God on a daily basis for at least an hour, it will keep darkness and its evil way is at bay. Light always uh, dispels uh, darkness and its evil uh, works. God is the father of lights. When you spend at least an hour a day communing with uh, your heavenly father, he loads you with uh, gifts and causes you to radiate his life and his light. His light that is now in you is going to radiate uh, through you. James tells us in James chapter 1, verse 17, he says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. Your Father is the Father of lights. He has good gifts and perfect gifts for you, with whom there is no variation or shadow of a turning. Yes. So when he shines through you, he dispels uh, darkness. He dispels all the works uh, of darkness. Whenever Moses spent time with God, when he came to the people, his face uh, was radiating uh, the glory of God. But after a while, the brilliance uh, would just uh, fade away and disappear. But as long as he stayed away from the presence of God, uh, the brilliance and the brightness of his face was uh, fading away. But when he returned to the Lord, spending time with the Lord, he would come back, his face would radiate again. Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 34, verse 34 to verse 35, he says, Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off, until he came out and he would come out and speak to the children of Israel whatever he had been commanded 
by God. So when you spend time with God, it is a face-to-face -face moment. There is no veil. You need to be transparent in the presence of the Lord. You need to look at the mirror of God's word. Spending time in this word, that is the mirror of God's word, so that you are transformed in that place of prayer by the renewing of your mind, by the washing of the water of the word of God. And he says, whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the, the skin of Moses' face shone, then Moses would put a veil on uh, his face again until he went in to speak with uh, God. If we commune at least an hour with the Lord daily, our face will daily radiate his glory and the darkness will be dispelled around us uh, like uh, it was uh, with uh, Moses. Jesus told us in John chapter 9, verse 5, As long as I am physically in the world, I am the light of the world. So when Jesus was walking the shore of uh, Galilee, the Straits of Jerusalem, he was physically the light of the world, representing his father, who is the father of the light. Now, Jesus says, I have ascended to heaven and I have deputized you, my disciples, to be my representatives on earth. Therefore, I want you to see yourselves as the light of the world. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to verse 16, Jesus says, you, my disciples, my representatives, my followers, are the light of the world. Because your heavenly Father is the Father of light. And you are born in you. You are born from above. You have become also children of light. You are the light of the world. And the city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket or a bushel. But they put it on the lampstand and it gives a light to all who are in the house. In other words, I do not want you to hide your light. You are the light that will drive away darkness and its evil works around you. For this purpose, the Bible tells us in First John chapter uh, 3, verse 8, the Son of God, Christ Jesus, who is the light of the world, was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And Jesus says, so let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven, who is the Father of the lights. Today, we have been able to study together how prayer opens up the heaven for you and clears the way for messaging angels, even messenger angels, to effortlessly ascend and descend over you. Prayer causes the light of God to radiate through you in order to dispel the darkness and its evil works around you and in the life of the people around you so that you can drive out those demons, you can heal the sick, just like Jesus did in his life and ministry on earth. We have explained how to cause God to daily shine his light through you like he was shining his light through Moses. Well, you will never be the light of the world if God, who is the Father of light, does not become your heavenly Father. Yes, it is a paramount that God becomes your Father. And to do so, you need to surrender your life to Christ. And only Christ, who is the light of the world, can graft you into his Father, who is the Father of uh, light. And God will be able to radiate his light through you and dispel darkness and its evil works in Jesus' name. So today, 
I want you to surrender your life to Christ. It is repentance to God because it is his law we have broken. And it is faith in Jesus who died on the cross in our state. And then you will be saved. So pray this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you. I want to give you all the glory for your sons and your daughters who are under the sound of my voice. They no longer want to be darkness. They were once darkness, but now they want to be light. And they can only, they can only become light when they surrender to you. So King of Glory, I pray right now that you forgive them of all their iniquities, whatever they have committed in the past. Father, forgive them and cleanse them with the blood of Jesus. Make them as white as snow. And I pray today you receive them into your fold. You said other sheep. I have who are not of this fold. I need to go and bring them into this fold. And today I want to add the souls of those who are under the sound of my voice into your initial fold because there is a room for everybody in the kingdom of heaven. All souls are yours. You left the 99 who were safe and secure and you went after the one soul that was lost. And when you found it, you rejoiced greatly over that soul and i pray today as uh, they have decided to no longer be darkness but to surrender their lives to you jesus the light of the world so that they can become sons and daughters of the father of light i pray that you forgive them and you cleanse them of all unrighteousness in jesus precious name pour out of your spirit upon them so that they can be also part of this christian family in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So if you have uh, prayed with me this prayer and you meant it in your heart, welcome into the family of believers. And uh, together we now belong to the household of God. We would like to hear from you. And also we have a gift for you.